Are we good? Yes. Great. Good evening. It is now 7 p.m. on February 11th, 2021. This is a joint meeting of the planning boards of the towns of Douglas, Sutton, and Uxbridge. I will now read the public hearing notice, just for formality. In accordance with the following bylaw provisions of the towns of Douglas, Sutton, and Uxbridge, the planning boards of each town will convene a joint hearing on the application of Scanel properties of Indianapolis, Indiana, for construction of an approximately 640,000 square foot warehouse and distribution facility to be located at 40 and 100 Lackey Dam Road in Uxbridge, but also to be located on adjacent land in Sutton, 1 and 3 Lackey Dam Road, and 20R and 30R Oakhurst Road, and in Douglas, map 114, parcels 3 through 6. The requested action for Douglas, zoning bylaw section 5, general regulations, section 6.1, special permit earth removal, section 9.3, special permits, section 9.4, site plan review, and general bylaws, article 9, signed bylaw. For Sutton, zoning bylaw section 3.A.4.F.5, use table, section 4.C, site plan review, section 5.D, route 146 overlay district special permit, 7.A.2 special permits, and general bylaw section 5 earth removal exemption. For Uxbridge, zoning bylaw, article two, section 400-20, use special permit, section 400-42, site plan review, and general bylaw part two, section 182-1, earth removal. This hearing is being held on Thursday, February 11, 2021, beginning at 7 p.m. The meeting is a virtual or remote meeting held in accordance with the orders issued by Governor Baker during current state of emergency. Persons may attend and participate in the hearing by using online Zoom application. The meeting ID is 885-3642-4752 and the password is 677582 or via phone 1929-205. 6099. Electronic materials can be viewed at https colon backslash backslash tinyurl.com backslash bl google drive and a copy of the same may also be requested by contacting the town staff for Douglas Bill Cundiff for Sutton Jen Hager and for Uxbridge Mike Gallerani. This notice was legally posted by the chairs of the respective planning boards this meeting is being recorded and the minutes are being taken by Jen Hager of Sutton. Again, this meeting is duly held under the provisions of the current state of emergency due to the current COVID-19 crisis pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. This meeting of the Douglas, Sutton and Uxbridge planning boards is being held remotely via Zoom. The meeting will be recorded and broadcast on local public access station and live streamed on the town's YouTube channels where available. Pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20, no person shall address a meeting of a public body without permission of the chair. Individuals who would like to participate should state their name and address before being recognized by the meeting facilitator. In an effort to ensure transparency to our viewers at home and participants on other mobile devices, the chat function has been disabled. We have also disabled any annotation function uh, since there will be sharing of screens in the uh, presentation. Please remain muted except for when you have rec been recognized by the facilitator. In the event of a Zoom bomb, uh, unauthorized people attending the meeting or other disruption, please remain on the meeting. Our staff will work rapidly to isolate the offending party so that we may continue the hearing. Okay, now all that's out of the way. Uh, my name is Trish Settles. I'm Deputy Director of the Central Massachusetts Regional Planning Commission, also known as CMRPC. You can see my logo behind my head. I'm also joined today by Principal Planner Carrie Salwa and Geographic Informational Analyst and Information Technology Specialist Matt Franz. CMRPC, uh, for just a little background, we are the Regional Planning Agency for 40 communities in Southern Worcester County, including all three of the towns working here tonight. We've been asked to facilitate this public hearing on behalf of the three municipalities. We in no way have any jurisdiction over this matter. Uh, the meeting tonight will be as follows. We'll do a roll call uh, vote to open the meeting, do introductions. There will be the applicant will make a presentation. 
There will be peer review by the consultants. We'll have an opportunity to make some introduction and explanation of their role. Our planning boards will have an opportunity to make some brief comments, and then we'll open it up for public comment. This is a short meeting this evening, although we'll go until 9 p.m. Public comment may be reduced in this meeting, not reduced, but limited because we will end at nine, but there will be ample opportunity in subsequent meetings for further comment and questions. Um, we will then also review the anticipated next steps, review meeting dates and meeting topics, and then we'll close the meeting with a continuation mo motion via roll call vote as well. <clears throat> I'm gonna take a big, big breath. Um, We'll start the, the roll call and the introduction, introduction of participants. Um, I'll do a roll call of each planning board first. When I call your name, please state your name and affirm you are in attendance by stating I. We'll start with the Douglas Planning Board, which is in part attending via Zoom from the Douglas Planning Board room. We'll start with Ernest Marks Jr. Aye. Thank you. Tracy Sharkey. Aye. Michael Greco? Aye. Jacob Schultzberg? Aye. Aaron Sokrat? Aye. Leslie Stevens? Aye. Michael Zwicker? Aye. And support from town engineer Bill Cundiff? Present. Thank you. <clears throat> we have a quorum of the Douglas Planning Board, the Sutton Planning Board. Walter Baker? Aye. Michael Gagan? Aye. Thank you. Robert Largess? Aye. Scott Paul? Scott Paul? Last time. Kyle Bergeson? Aye. Bill Talcott? Aye. And support from Jen Hager? I'm present. Thank you. We have a quorum of this Sutton Planning Board. For Uxbridge, Barry Desereau, Deresto, Aye. sorry. Thank you. James Smith. Aye. Barry Hoke. Aye. Eli Lavadier. Aye. Joe Leonardo. Aye. And support by Michael Gallerani. Thank you. Uh, at this point, I'd like to introduce the development team. As I state your name, please just say you're here and kind of wave at the, 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 the attendees. We have the applicant, Zachary Zweifler of Scanal Properties. Present. Thank you. The attorneys for the applicant, Mark Donahue and Todd Brodeur from Fletcher Tilton. Present. Here, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dan Feeney, the civil engineer from Beals and Thomas. Present. Thank you. And traffic consultant from VHB Vinod Kalakiri. Thank you. We're also joined this evening by peer review consultants for the project. As I state your name, please say here and wave. Jeff Walsh from Graves Engineering. Here. Thank you. James Noyes from Greenman Peterson. Uh, actually, Rebecca Brown from Greenman Peterson is here taking his place. Thank you, Rebecca. Yep, no problem. Uh, and do we have somebody here from Echo Tech, uh, Art Allen or Paul McManus? They've been retained for, by the towns for the CONCOM hearing, but we'll be coordinating with Graves Engineering um, as necessary. The developer is now gonna make a full presentation of the project. This will be followed by initial comments again from the planning boards, uh, introduction to the, uh, you know, an opportunity by the peer review consultants to say a, a few words, and then finally by the uh, public comments. Um, when we get to the public comments, I'll provide more more instructions on how to uh, how to uh, uh, raise your hand and, and be acknowledged. Uh, comments from the town departments are being received and will be discussed at subsequent nights on the hearing. This meeting is slated to last no more than two hours this evening. So again, this is the first of multiple meetings. We will review the dates of the next meetings at the end of tonight's meeting. Um, the questions and comments we will not address. There will not be a response to them. But they'll be captured by the minutes and on the recording. The agenda for all subsequent nights of the hearing will be legally posted in each town, including the topics that will be covered in, in those uh, subsequent meetings. So at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Dan Feeney and Vinod Kalakiri. I believe that's correct for the developer presentation. And we can <coughs> share our screen with them. Is that correct? 
So, Madam Chair, uh, this is Todd Broder from Fletcher Tilton. I'm going to kick off our portion of the presentation tonight, uh, but thank you and, and good evening, everybody. Um, it, it would be, I would be remiss if I didn't thank a few people. This took a lot of effort to put together. So, you know, the staff from each town, we've worked with them closely on coordination and logistics and scheduling of of both this hearing and some pre-meeting hearings that we, pre-hearing meetings that we we had. And so I'd like to thank them and Trish and Kerry and, and your team. I think I see a, a new member, Matt Franz on the screen there for your work from CMRPC stepping into the fray here and agreeing to coordinate this uh, three planning board public hearing during COVID. So congratulations for pulling it off. Uh, and, and then thanks, thanks to the planning boards for setting aside the time and also making themselves available, um, you know, prior to this. So, you know, tonight is what we consider to be the first in a series of hearings. We're going to try to cover uh, specific topics on any given night. Um, during the course of the hearing process, you'll hear from members of our team. They'll introduce themselves and tell you about themselves and get into their particular area uh, of expertise. Uh, I did want to give a, a few minutes to uh, the, the applicant uh, and Zachary Zweffler, who's the development manager from Scannell, just to give a few words about Scannell. So Zachary, you want to take it away? Absolutely. Good evening. And I'll echo Todd's uh, appreciation for, for all the effort that went into this and all your time, opportunity to speak. Uh, I'll keep this very brief, happy to go in at a later date or, or later tonight in greater detail about Scannell and uh, kind of our, our role here, but short and dirty version, uh, Scannell Properties is a multinational industrial development firm. Uh, we're both operate all 50 states in the US, Canada, Mexico, the Caribbean, and then we uh, 2018 launched our European operations. Uh, so now we're in, in multiple countries with throughout Europe. <laughs> By sense of scale, uh, we completed $2.6 billion of construction starts in 2020. Uh, so it's a pretty good banner year for us. Uh, and that had projects ranging again all across the country. Uh, our bread and butter is the kinds of facilities that, that we've proposed here, uh, which is warehouse distribution uh, with an emphasis on, on their logistical value. I bring that up to say that this is a space we know very well, and, and we'll talk in more detail as, as other consultants will weigh in about specifics of our proposal. But this is the design criteria and the, the matrix that we've used to pull this together is based on the hundreds of projects we complete every year and our understanding of our core client. Uh, so it's it's none of this was was arbitrary or capricious as we were pulling this together. It's very intentional. Uh, we have been operating in the, in the state of Massachusetts for over 15 years. Uh, when we entered with, with one of our core clients uh, and partners in a built to suit. And we've been, we've been doing multiple projects every year since. Uh, so despite the Indianapolis address, I can assure you we've, we've got quite a presence here in Massachusetts. And uh, I think every, every member of our consulting team has done projects within probably a 20 minute uh, radius of this uh, site both with Scannell and, and with others, because our whole team is, is hyper-focused on this portion of the state in this area. Uh, but again, look forward to, to our tonight and future conversations. Thank you all. Thank you, Zachary, for that. Uh, so folks, the, the, the project you're gonna hear about tonight obviously uh, is, is being heard jointly by the Douglas, Uxbridge and Sutton planning boards because it, it contains land which is in within each of those towns. Uh, when in a few minutes, Dan Feeney will share this kind of schematic site plan, which is a little bit of an overview of the site and the project. And you'll you'll see why, if you don't already know, uh, you know, the, the, the building here that we're proposing really sits smack in the middle of you know, the town line con congregates in the middle of the building, essentially. So <clears throat> just for a little bit of you know, background, I'm sure we'll have public participation here and we're happy to have that. Just want to make sure people know, you know, th this is a joint hearing process, but each of the planning boards will be making, you know, its own decision in accordance with their usual customs and standards and procedures. And, and so, though we are doing this as a joint presentation, certainly each of those boards has their uh, jurisdiction 
And as Trish mentioned, you know, there are a number of different permits in each town and some are different um, depending upon uh, the town that we're speaking to. So we will at some point be breaking those down and going through and deciphering what's necessary and, and required as far as findings. But for right now, up front here, we're going to give kind of general presentation that's applicable really to the three towns. And we'll pick apart those individual issues as we get further along. Uh, in addition to the permits that Trish read off in the beginning, uh, we have other uh, permits and applications which are going to be pending or will be pending. And so I just wanted to mention those tonight as those are also the source of public hearings and or other processes. And that would include the MEPA process on the state basis. That would include um, the Conservation Commission's review of notice of intent filings, which will be made shortly. And each of those conservation commissions are going to have uh, their own hearings on their own um, you know, jurisdictional areas. And <clears throat> so those processes will be going on simultaneously with this process. In addition, in Sutton, uh, we did make a filing with the Zoning Board of Appeals for a setback variance due to the uh, closeness to and proximity to the town line. So there will be a separate hearing, the Zoning Board of Appeals in Sutton. <clears throat> you know, those, again, those hearings will be held in their normal course. Uh, each aspect of this project, and, and some of those folks are on the line tonight, you know, the town has uh, obtained con peer consultant reviews on those. And you'll be hearing from those folks as well as we go through uh, the process. So I mentioned we expect, it, we expect to cover, um, uh, we'll have a first in a series tonight of hearings. We expect to cover a certain amount of material tonight to give a general overview of some of the civil issues. Uh, we are going to kind of open up the, the traffic conversation kind of generally with Venud's presentation. Uh, but we do intend on covering traffic much more intensely at the next hearing. So I just wanted to make that, you know, that that point up front that um, you know we don't anticipate having an hour long presentation on traffic tonight. You're going to hear very generally from Benud on what he's done with the study and how that how that sort of uh, will play out in the next hearing. So <clears throat> just checking my notes here. Excuse me. So for, for our presentation purposes, you know, shortly I will hand it over to Dan Feeney from Beals and Thomas, who will describe some of those, some of those site features. We're also interested in getting, you know, board comments on some of the general overarching issues and, you know, any of those lightning rod issues that the board may see or, or things that they want to hear more about at future meetings. And again, we are willing to and anticipate uh, gathering some of that public comment so that we can start to address any of those issues as well. Trish mentioned um, that there is a link, it's on the Sutton Planning Board's website for application materials that have been submitted. We anticipate that with Jen's help and the help of the Sutton Planning Department that uh, documents will continue to be uploaded to that site so that peer review comment letters, uh, any department comment letters, and uh, even uh, you know letters that we get from third parties will be uploaded to that website and be available for folks so that you can have uh, time to review those materials and so that they'll be available to everybody. And we thought that was a good way to be able to disseminate you know the information. As part of the, the applications that we made to each of the towns, we submitted a fairly detailed project narrative, which covered a lot of, you know, the, the sort of minutia of the applications and some of the details on, you know, on the site. I'm not gonna go through that, that letter. I'm sure I'd lose everybody in the audience here if I tried to do so. But I did wanna point out a few things, kind of I consider them to be sort of highlights of, of the project and just kind of quick, quick notes that I can give you. And that is, you know, one is the, the size of the proposed building. You'll see on the plan from Dan that the building's almost 646,000 square feet in size. 
the site itself is almost 70 acres of land. The site is located uh, on an area that has been previously the location of significant uh, gravel, sand and gravel operations. So it's significantly disturbed site already. Uh, part of the, the, the site had to consider a very large electrical easement that separates uh, this parcel from a parcel to the north, uh, which will be subdivided off uh, at some point during our process. And so when we look at that plan, you'll see there's, there's remaining land to the north of our site, which is not at all the subject of this, this project. I would like to note as well that um, should we get questions about who the tenant may be in this particular case, I can tell you that the tenant has not been identified for this particular project. You know, this is a warehouse, warehouse and, <coughs> excuse me, distribution. And you know, there will be tenants in that arena that will come to this site that will be driven by the market and should they not fall, should a tenant come to this site that doesn't fall into that category, we will have to respond accordingly. But at this point, it is the intention to have that type of user at this site, and that is how it is designed, and that is how it is being you know, presented to, to you folks. We anticipate that the building will have a, a significant portion of the building will, will be an office component up to 30,000 square feet, as noted in our narrative. Uh, the application intends to have a 24 hour a day operation at this particular location. And just a note, to me, this is a highlight. The anticipated cost of the project we did, we did set forth in the narrative and in, indicated it would be roughly a 47, $47 million project. So land acquisition cost aside, the construction is significant and this is a pretty a pretty sizable project. The nature of the project is, is going to require, you know, us to work through particular issues with, with each of the towns, you know, the, the tax assessments and how that particular issue might work and emergency response procedures. And so some of those conversations have already happened. We anticipate having future conversations with regard to those topic and others. Uh, we understand that those issues are, are important for each of the municipalities and they're certainly important for, for the project as well. So we, we've had some of those initial conversations and they'll continue. So at, at this time, I'd, I'd like to ask Dan Feeney to you know, take over the presentation, go through some of the civil design aspects. So Dan, uh, take it away. Sure. Thanks, Todd. Uh, for the record, Dan Feeney. I'm a professional engineer at Bales and Thomas with the project uh, civil engineers, as well as the surveyors, landscape architects. Um, if it's all right, I will share my screen um, and I'll just call up uh, a couple of exhibits that we've done um, to try to help summarize the project um, in an overview. Um, so you should be able to see my screen now. You're ready. Um, so you know, I'll just kind of start with a quick overview of existing conditions. Um, you can see there's a north arrow on the plan. The north arrow sort of points to the upper left-hand corner of the sheet. For the ease of just describing the project, I'm going to refer to everything um, towards the left-hand side of the, of the plan as being north. Um, it's technically um, a little bit northwest, but we'll just call it north for, for ease of that. So. Um, just to echo what Todd said, um, the property is uh, just under 70 acres in size. Um, it's part of a large 115 acre property. Um, so only what's called lot one is under control by Scanal. Um, so there will be an A&R uh, plan that needs to be filed to subdivide the property. Um, and that is what um, Scanel will be purchasing is just lot one. So we're showing lot two here. It is technically part of the, the existing lot right now. It's all part of the 115 acres. We just wanted to reinforce that, that we're talking about the 70 acres. And so the outline of that 70 acres um, along the Eastern side um, comes up like this. Um, it comes across um, what is a 250 foot national grid easement that runs in a north south direction here. Um, with significant structures and overhead wires in that area. It then continues um, around the site. Uh, it borders Route 146, 
um, along the western side, um, continuing down uh, to Lackey Dam Road here, with Lackey Dam Road bordering the southern side. There are residential abutters to the property on the other side of Lackey Dam Road, as well as Lackey Pond um, behind the residential abutters. Um, to the north of the property is a, a mix of um, open land as well as um, some mixed use uh, uses up in that area. Um, so again, the size of the lot is 70 acres. Um, approximately 31 acres of land is in Uxbridge, 31 acres in um, Sutton, and uh, the balance, about seven and a half acres, is in Douglas. Um, you can see the town line here um, coming through the site. So Sutton um, is sort of the northern por portion of the site, Uxbridge, the southern portion. Um, with the frontage all being within Uxbridge here along Lackey Dam Road. And then a triangular piece that comes off from the west um, is the Douglas portion of the site down in here. Um, as Todd mentioned, the site is a former uh, quarry site. So um, a lot of the site is open. Um, there is some existing vegetation um, along Route 146, both within the 146 right of way as well as on site. Um, on site, um, there are some wetlands um, along the 146 right of way here, um, and those are vegetated wetlands. So those, those are heavily vegetated in those areas. So there's a bordering vegetative wetland um, at the southwest corner of the site. That flow um, flows um, further to the south under Lackey uh, Dam Road through a culvert and into Lackey Pond. <coughs> As you move um, north along the western property line, there is an isolated wetland uh, right on the Sutton Douglas town line, potential vernal pool there as well. Um, again, moving for, further north, there's a uh, bordering vegetative wetland. There appears to be a hydraulic connection here, which makes it bordering, which heads to the north. Um, two small isolated wetlands up by the northern property line. Um, and then a larger wetland system that comes on to the eastern portion of the site within the national grid. Um, easement down in here um, and continues on to the um, other section of the existing lot um, going into lot two. Um, so we have wetlands sort of around the edges of the property um, as well as the, the national grid easement. In addition to that, shown kind of in this magenta color, is a 50 foot wide Tennessee gas pipeline easement that runs primarily in the north southerly direction. Um, adjacent to uh, Route 146, and then it bends off of the site down here, heading off to, to Route 146. Um, so those are some of the existing site constraints um, that we're dealing with. In terms of the zoning at the site, um, within Sutton, the site is zoned um, within the um, Office and Light Industrial District. It's also in the Route 146 Overlay District, as well as the uh, Wireless Communication Overlay District. Um, within Uxbridge, it's zoned um, in the um, multi-town mixed commerce uh, zoning district. Um, and within Douglas, it's in the uh, industrial district. Um, so the, the use of the, the property um, does allow the proposed uh, warehouse distribution facility. Um, so that um, is in accordance with that. We, um, as Todd had mentioned, the former use of the quarry site um, has created some interesting topography out at the site. Um, there is um, a couple of low points internal to the site that drain exceptionally well, given the nature of the sand and gravel soils out there. Um, so there is some low points that, that are self-contained within the site, um, as well as um, the drainage primarily that does leave the site does primarily drain down to the two major wetland systems along the western, southwestern property and southeastern property um, down here. The, the, those ones um, basically capture the majority of the flow. The flow to these um, other wetland systems is quite limited from on site. Um, they grade up from the wetlands fairly steeply and then proceed to, to grade back down from there. So there's a very small drainage areas to these other wetland systems on site. Um, so that's sort of a rundown of uh, the existing conditions out at the site. In terms of the proposed improvements at the site, um, it is just short of a 646,000 square foot building. Again, as Todd mentioned, you can see the 
property line intersection point of the three towns, almost exactly in the middle of the building. Um, so um, roughly half, a little over half the building, 53% would lie within uh, the town of Uxbridge, um, about 37% in the town of Sutton and the balance approximately 10% um, within Douglas. Um, this is zoning summary table that was provided um, on the plans as well as on this exhibit. I know it's gonna be a little bit tough to read. Um, the building is situated such that it meets all of the setback requirements. Um, there's there's uh, ample distance um, to the property lines. This is a relatively, um, the scale of this plan is such that it's further than it looks. This is probably, I, I just believe, I believe it's 156 feet, about 155 to 156 feet. Um, from the edge of this building uh, to the front setback at Lackey Dam Road. So that just gives you a little bit of the scale there um, of the project. Um, the, um, just continuing on with some of the zoning compliance, um, both uh, the Uxbridge and Douglas zoning allow a 60 foot high building. Um, the Sutton within the um, Route 146 overlay district allows a 40 foot, 45 foot high building. And that is what is being proposed out here is a 45 foot uh, building height. Um, so that's in compliance with, with the zoning, um, with the provision of it being in the Route 146 overlay district. Um, we also have plenty of frontage on Lackey Dam Road. There's approximately 1800 feet of frontage out here, um, which exceeds any of the town requirements for, for frontage. Right you know, and then the zoning, the zoning um, also um, shows compliance with some of the um, additional zoning requirements within the town of Sutton in regards to lot coverage, open space, um, maximum regulatory um, factor, um, sorry, minimum regulatory factor, and the, um, the contiguous upland requirement. Um, so that's sort of an overview of the project as it relates to zoning. Um, in terms of um, access to the site, um, there is an existing access point off of Lackey Dam Road that was part of the quarry operations right down in this area. So the proposed access location is uh, very similar to that. Um, vehicles that are accessing the site, the truck traffic um, will come into the site and then make a right-hand turn and proceed to go around the building in a counterclockwise direction. There is proposed to be a guardhouse um, to check in the truck tra traffic coming into the site. Um, the employee parking would continue straight up and then make a right hand turn into the employee parking. So that is the primary access point into the site. Um, as part of the traffic study being done, and, and, and Vinod can get into a little bit more detail, but there is proposed to be a left hand turn into the site. Um, this section of Lackey Dam Road as it comes off of Route 146 is under state control. Um, so that would you know, be part of a um, access permit uh, requirement there for, for both the access as well as um, the striping that would be needed to stripe in a left turn lane. There is proposed to be a secondary means of access into the site um, for emergency vehicles. This is something that has been talked about um, with various um, town staff, um, about having a, another means of access into the site. So this is in a location where there is access currently. Um, it would uh, come um, in the same location. We'd have to change the grade up here to get it to grade up into the site. Um, and this is an area that is within the National Grid easement. And we have been coordinating with National Grid on providing um, the access for emergency vehicles only through there. Um, just getting into a little bit about the site layout and the parking that's provided on the site. We are proposing 178 vehicle parking spaces, uh, passenger car pa parking spaces, um, right at the front entry of the building. That would include six handicapped parking spaces. In addition to that, there's 250 tractor trailer parking spaces that are proposed throughout the site. Those are both um, along the loading dock areas to the, to the east and to the west of the building as well as a remote area up to the north up here. Um, so that provides for a total of 428 parking spaces, looking at the parking requirements within each town, um, basing it on a warehouse distribution use with a 5% allowance for office space within the building. Um, 
Douglas and Sutton zoning are, are the same in terms of the number of required parking spaces, uh, one per 2,000 2, square feet of um, the warehouse space and one per 250 square feet of office. So that would come out to require 428 parking spaces. Uxbridge requires more parking. Um, they require uh, one per 1,500 um, square feet of warehouse space, and I believe one for every 200 square feet of, of office space. So that would come out to a higher number, um, but they do have provisions within the zoning um, to get a, get a waiver from that. Um, we believe that the parking that's shown out here is what the market would dictate. Um, again, there is no tenant um, identified yet, but we believe the parking is consistent with what the market would, would require on that. Um, uh, there is loading docks, as previously noted, on both sides of the building, um, on opposite sides, 55 loading docks on each side for a total of 110 loading dock spaces. Um, in terms of um, the, um, the grading for the site, uh, we didn't show the grades on this plan just for, for clarity of the plan, um, but as I noted before, um, the site grades throughout the site are fairly flat in the um, rear portion of the lot, and then it starts to slope down towards Lackey Dam Road, um, and it gets a little bit steeper as you get down closer to Lackey Dam Road. Um, the high point of the site is within the easement up here. Um, there is a steep grade up um, from the rest of the site up through here. It goes up to approximately elevation 420. Um, a lot of the site in the rear portion is in the 360, 370 range back in here. Um, and it does slope down um, to an elevation within Lackey Dam Road, approximately 330, and getting lower as you approach Route 146, getting down to about 324, I believe, as you as you get along the um, the westernmost portion of the frontage on Lackey Dam Road. Um, so we designed the site um, to try to balance the cut and fills, the earthwork associated with the project. Uh, there is um, a fair amount of earth that needs to be moved, as you can imagine, for um, a building footprint of this size, as well as, you know, to support the loading docks and the truck traffic. Um, so based on some, some of those studies and trying to limit the amount of retaining walls, we came up with a, a finished floor elevation of 359. Um, that requires that the access off of Blackie Dam Road will slope up into the site through here. Um, Again, we did attempt to minimize the retaining walls. We did end up with some retaining walls along the gas easement, along the western side of the site, um, along the um, some of you know to respect the existing utility pole elevations along the eastern side of the site over here, um, as well as um, to try to keep as much existing vegetation as possible out along Lackey Dam Road. We did uh, we are proposing a retaining wall um, along the uh, truck access into the site and just around the truck uh, trailer area here. Um, so on this plan, you can see um, the uh, existing tree line that's to remain um, in this cloud area here um, all throughout um, the frontage. So there's, there's a um, good vegetation screen down along Lackey Dam Road, both within the right of way. There's a pretty good distance from the edge of the pavement to the right of way line. Um, so those trees would obviously remain. And then we've kept trees coming into the site as well as proposed some additional vegetation, um, some evergreen, some white spruce and some white pines um, along Lackey Dam Road as well. Um, I'll just pull up another exhibit real quick. It just kind of shows the front area um, and a little bit closer of a viewport. The grades are on on this plan. Um, so it, it, it shows you that, that, you know, we're sloping up into the site at around 5%, 5, 6% coming in um, to the site to make up that grade, um, as well as showing um, some of the retaining walls. Again, to get a sense as to the scale, um, there's a label over here that shows it's approximately 47 feet um, of vegetation um, from um, where it's remaining to the property line down here um, along uh, one of the proposed basins. So um, I know at this scale, it looks like a small amount, but it's actually a, a pretty wide area um, just based on the scale of the plan. Um, something else to, to note, just going back to the larger plan, just wanted to talk briefly about the utilities for the proposed project. 
um, water. Um, it will be my municipal um, water. We are um, have talked to both the, the Douglas Water Department as well as the Whitenville, Whitensville Water Company. Um, both have water about the same distance from the site. Um, Douglas is a little bit closer. Um, Douglas actually has water extended down to the Dunkin' Donuts facility um, gas station that's on the other side of Route 146. Um, in order to provide adequate uh, fire protection, there would be a section of pipe within Balboa Road that would need to be upgraded. Um, it is, a, I believe, a six inch line that would need to come up to at least a 12 inch line um, in order to provide for that. Um, from uh, the Whitensville Water Company has water within Sutton. It's up by the intersection of Oakhurst and Lackey Dam Road. Um, and both have uh, expressed a willingness and ability to provide uh, the water that's needed for both domestic and fire protection purposes. The, uh, the domestic water use is not anticipated to be that significant for the warehouse distribution uh, use. Um, probably anywhere from five to 10,000, uh, depending on the tenant. Um, so um, the real key with the, bringing the water to the site is for the, um, the fire protection. The building will obviously be sprinklered um, and you know, it would require good fire pressure. And again, both the Whitensville Water Company and the Douglas Water um, have expressed the ability to, to provide for that. Um, we are proposing an on-site septic system in this area right here. Again, um, the septic system would probably be around 5,000 gallons. We've shown a footprint down here for approximately 9,000 gallons per day of sewage, um, just to be conservative again, to give flexibility um, for tenant uh, moving in. Um, but we anticipate based on the Title V requirement for 15 gallons per day for it to be around um, 5,000 gallons per day. Um, Stormwater from the site, um, it's, it's again, primarily going to be um, directed to these two basins. Infiltration Basin 2 is shown at the intersection of Route 146 and Lackey Dam Road. Infiltration Basin 1 is shown um, adjacent to the, um, the National Grid uh, easement over here. So um, the western portion of the site will be directed uh, to a uh, collected by catch basins with deep sumps and, and hoods and conveyed to a swale that runs along adjacent to the gas easement. Um, the roof runoff will be collected and piped. Um, they'll be routed through a sediment four bay and into the infiltration basin. The employee parking lot area uh, will be collected um, in catch basins discharged to a proposed bioretention area. And then again, come through uh, the sediment four bay and into um, the, the infiltration basin. The last section of um, the entrance driveway will be collected, um, be treated by a water quality structure and then be uh, discharged into the infiltration system. The western half of the building and the western um, um, loading dock, I'm sorry, the eastern loading dock and the eastern half of the building will be discharged into infiltration basin one. The parking will be required to go through a water quality structure as there's, there's no room for a uh, sediment four bay. So to get the pretreatment necessary, there'll be, it'll be directed to a water quality structure before discharge into infiltration basin one. Infiltration basin one will discharge um, across the emergency access drive, access drive um, and eventually into the wetland area. Um, infiltration basin number two um, will discharge um, to the wetland system that, that flows off site and then goes out underneath Lackey Dam Road. Again, both ending up in Lackey Pond. Um, the lighting for the project is proposed uh, through 25 foot um, light poles uh, with LED lighting. Um, a photometrics plan has been provided, um, which shows uh, adequate lighting throughout the site development area, but uh, reducing to zero foot candles at the property line so that there won't be any light spillage onto adjacent properties. Um, so that's an overview of the, um, the existing and proposed conditions at the site. Um, I think at this point, I can turn it over back to you, Todd, if you wanna um, switch it over to traffic. Yes, thanks, Dan. That was a great, uh, great overview and some good details there. 
Uh, now I'd like to ask Vanood Kalikari from VHB, the traffic consultant on the project, to kind of give you an overview of traffic and the study that he performed in anticipation of this project. Vinod. Thank you, Doug. Uh, good evening, everyone. Let me just uh, get my screen going here. Please let me know when, when you see the see the slides. Can you see us? I'll set that very good. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Vinod Kalikiri. I'm a traffic engineer with the firm of uh, BHP, Venice Hang and Breslin. Uh, my office is based uh, in Worcester, which is right behind City Hall on Front Street. Um, I actually live a few exits to the north of uh, north of this site in Millbury, so I'm very familiar with this area. Uh, commute up and down 146 all the time to our office in Providence, so uh, it's a very familiar area. As, as uh, uh, Zachary mentioned early on in the presentation, uh, you know, there's a team of local. Uh, experts on, on all aspects of this project working working on uh, on different uh, aspects traffic sites so uh, noise air quality um, and so my, my goal today uh, as Todd mentioned is, is actually it's not intended to go into a, a full presentation of the traffic study that that's going to come up uh, at one of the future meetings. What I'm hoping to do with, with a few slides that I have here, uh, now that you have a good understanding of what's going to happen on the site, I want to zoom out a little bit and set the framework for uh, the traffic discussion uh, that's going to happen uh, again at a future meeting. Uh, but a lot of uh, thought and analysis went into this, uh, you know, as, as you may recall uh, last year, there was a filing with the, with the MEPA office, uh, an environmental notification form uh, that started off looking at you know, some of the details of this project. And then um, we started getting into a lot more of the detailed analyses and especially for traffic uh, back in October when we had a kickoff meeting with, with all three towns. In fact, actually all three towns and with the town of Northbridge uh, before we actually got into the details of the study. So what you see on the screen uh, obviously is, is, the, is the site location map with the red outline showing the, uh, the site essentially straddling all, all three towns, uh, Sutton, Knoxbridge, and Douglas, uh, and not, not too far from Northbridge. Um, we are at exit number four uh, at, on 146. Uh, then we'll get into a little bit more of the context in one of the slides coming up. Um, let's see. So what, what I'm hoping to cover again today is, is, to, uh, is to give you a brief overview of, of what we did with the traffic study and what, what we looked at, what our goals were, what, what we are hoping to document as part of this process. What was the methodology we used uh, to analyze the impacts of this project, you know, there are standard methodologies prescribed by the state. You know, Mass DOT has very rigorous and clear guidelines on how we prepare traffic impact studies for any development project, including uh, projects like this. Uh, so I'll go through some of the, the methodology or the, the goals of what we put together in the document. Uh, I'll briefly touch upon what we have done to date, and then obviously the next steps, uh, including the meeting that would come up next where, where we'll get into the details of the traffic study. Uh, what is not included today, again, is, is, is actually a detailed drill down into you know, what the analysis shows and what we found with the study. Those, those we'll get into, uh, into at future meetings. So just to set the stage for, for the traffic impact analysis, uh, you know, the site abuts, as, as Dan mentioned, uh, two sections actually of, of roadways that are under the jurisdiction of Mass DOT Route 146, uh, limited access highways is entirely under the jurisdiction of Mass DOT through this, through this area. 
as well as uh, a good section of Lackey Dam Road along the side frontage all the way actually down into the interchange uh, down here, running up along the side frontage up to a certain point, and then it switches over to, uh, to town layout in the town of uh, Axbridge. And because of our adjacency to the state highway uh, right of way and the fact that you know our access is is very you know very close to the state highway limits, uh, we would need uh, an access permit from Mass DOT. So in addition to local approvals from the towns of Sutton, Axbridge, and Douglas, we will be seeking a permit a permit and approval from the Mass DOT to construct uh, this project. Obviously, again, given the proximity of Northbridge, we wanted to make sure that we uh, we are cognizant of Northbridge's concerns related to traffic and wanted to make sure that our study captured any relevant aspects of uh, traffic impact that goes up towards, uh, towards Northbridge as well. Uh, Dan did go into a lot of detail with, with the site layout. This was the graphic you just saw a couple of minutes ago. Uh, and again, when, when you distill a lot of the details that you'll hear at, at the future meeting, what, what you will see is that predominantly the traffic associated with this site will be using those two movements that you see in red. It's a left turn into the site from Lackey Dam Road and a right turn out of the site from Lackey Dam Road. And if you chase those arrows down uh, Lackey Dam Road, you'll see that those numbers, those, those uh, vehicles very quickly disperse onto 146. Uh, not to say that there will be no traffic on local streets. There will be, obviously, if, if, if there's an employee that works at this facility that lives in Northbridge or Douglas or any of the communities to the north or south that can be accessed off of Lackey Dam Road or, or any of the other streets, Main Street, you know, they, they, they would be on, on, these, uh, on the local streets. Uh, but predominantly, the majority, I would say, you know, more than two thirds or more than 70% probably in some of the vehicle types, and we'll get into that later on, uh, will be oriented towards the highway. So it, it, in, a, in a way, the reason why the project is where you're seeing it is because of the proximity to, to the interchange, to the 146 interchange and, and the ease of access to get on and off of the highway. So. Uh, so that's just for context on, on the movements that, that you'll see where the data will be focused on uh, as part of the more detailed analysis. Uh, as I mentioned early on, we met with uh, uh, all uh, four towns, actually, uh, Sutton, Douglas, Uxbridge, and Northbridge, as well as with Mass DOT through the MEPA process to make sure that we identified a study area for this project that, that really looks at uh, the impacts that are uh, critical to, to the function of Lackey Dam Road, but also uh, you know, providing access to the site. So uh, the section of road that, that we would focus on uh, as part of you know, today's conversation, but also in the more detailed analysis is what you see outlined in that sort of pink salmon color, starting off at the Shell gas station driveways to the south, uh, the side of the highway, um, south side of the highway, going all the way up to Prescott Road that, that essentially leads up into Northbridge and a lot of the residential areas to the north. Um, there are other data points that we collected through the process in conversations with, with the town and, and the feedback we've received. You know, we looked at some information on uh, Central Turnpike, for example, in Sutton. Uh, we looked at uh, ease of access on local roads versus the highway uh, to get to 395, for example. How, how easy is it to get to 395, for example, via 146 and, and Central Turnpike versus you know, driving through Douglas? And we looked at a lot of those uh, details and a lot of that information helped synthesize the area that we wanted to focus on and study for, for this particular uh, site. And that's the documentation that you'll see included in the, in the detailed traffic study that's, that's posted on uh, Sutton's website. Uh, just to quickly touch upon the methodology for what exactly you would find or how the study is prepared. Again, the methodology itself is pretty well defined. Uh, 
guidelines, even at the state level, mass DOT and NEPA guidelines uh, require us to uh, use an approved methodology to, to analyze the impacts of projects like this, figure out you know, how many vehicle trips uh, the site would generate, what types of vehicles, whether they're employee trips, truck trips, uh, or, or you know, vans or any, any vehicle type. And we look at multiple uh, sources of data to estimate how, uh, you know, what type of traffic or what type of vehicular traffic the site would generate. Um, as you heard earlier in the conversation, the presentation, uh, there isn't a, a tenant identified for the site yet. So we have to rely on, on guidelines and uh, state uh, for procedures to estimate traffic for, for development of this stuff. We looked at previous studies that were available through CMRPC as well as other development projects in each of the towns. Uh, all towns were very helpful in identifying studies and reports that would be relevant to our review. So they provided us the information which we used in our analysis. Uh, as I mentioned, we consulted with all four towns and with MassDOT to prepare the study. We went through a very extensive process of data collection, uh, both at the, the roadway geometry level, you know, the traffic control, whether they're dealing with stop signs or yield signs, you know, whether you know, churn lanes at, at specific locations, we look at safety data uh, related to vehicular crashes, you know, their pedestrian crashes, bicycle crashes, uh, or multiple years of uh, analysis. We look at sight lines. Uh, we want to make sure that, you know, especially at the site driveway or, or along the roadways that, that provide access to the site, uh, if there are sight line constraints that, that would inhibit uh, uh, visibility to oncoming traffic. So we focus on that information. Uh, we kind of distill all of that information into what, what you see in that second uh, box of bullets, which is, which is our current conditions. You know, what's happening on these roadways today, independent of future growth. Uh, you know, we don't look at what other projects are going to do out here. We, we, we won't look yet at what this project would do. We just look at uh, what, what's happening today to, set, to establish a baseline of traffic conditions. Then we go into the third box of bullets that you see there, where we look at future conditions. Again, following state guidelines, we estimate traffic for what future conditions would be out on these streets. Uh, first, without the project. So you know, we identified <laughs> several projects uh, in, in all of these communities that, that are in the pipeline or that have been approved but haven't been constructed yet. So we obtained data about those projects and reviewed them and, and uh, used that information in our analysis where appropriate. Uh, then we estimate the traffic for the project itself uh, using again, national statistics on, you know, from the Institute of Transportation Engineers, which is, which is a, a very common source of data for estimating traffic for development projects. So we use their estimates to figure out how much traffic the site would generate. Working closely with canal properties, the, the development uh, team, uh, we were able to actually drill down into the operational aspects of how, how they see this site functioning. As, as Zachary mentioned, you know, they, they permit uh, and build these, these types of developments all the time. You know, very uh, strong uh, portfolio of projects where we could rely on get information on how these sites operate, how they function, what we can expect for hours of operation, what times do the traffic peak. Uh, and then we correlate that with the national data that we have access to that, are, that is required by MEPA and MassDOT for us to use. And we use all of that information to estimate the amount of traffic the site would generate and apply that traffic onto the roadway system uh, to understand the impacts with and without the project. So you go you know, seven years into the future, see what the traffic, traffic impacts are without the project. So that's based on just background development, other projects that have been approved or that are in the pipeline. Then you compare those results to uh, the, the traffic operations with the project in place. And the difference between those two sets of results would give you a pretty good handle on what, what the impacts of the project would be in the future. And then we would use that information to develop uh, improvement measures, uh, you know, whether it's turn lanes or uh, changes to traffic control, 
things of that nature to make sure that uh, traffic operations and safety are maintained on the roadway system and there's an efficient access and egress uh, design for the site itself. Obviously, all of this needs to be reviewed through the MEPA process, the Mass DOT review at the state level, as well as by the three towns that, that would issue permits for the project. And that's, that's actually the step that we are in right now. Um, so just to touch upon some of the future steps that we would need to go through as, as, as we go forward in this process, uh, I think Todd mentioned the town has uh, brought in, all three towns actually brought in an independent third party peer review consultant. Uh, they've been brought on board to review the traffic study, the assumptions that we made and the findings we developed. So you'll be hearing from them uh, today as well as in the future when we do the full traffic presentation, we'll have to complete the mass DOT review process as part of the MEPA uh, review as well as subsequently for any, any traffic improvements that, that would come out of this process. Obviously, we'll need to secure all of our local permits. And before we construct any, uh, anything on the site, uh, in fact, actually, uh, as well as any traffic improvements, we would need an access permit from, from Mass DMT as well. So there, there's a lot, you know, there's a lot to uh, take place uh, in the months to come. But my goal today was to give you a brief overview of what the traffic study entails and uh, and kind of open up the conversation. Uh, the one, oh, the one thing I, I do want to touch upon, uh, we do know in uh, having been in conversation with Mass DOT already as part of the MEPA review that's ongoing, that Mass DOT will require a post-construction monitoring study. In fact, multiple years of study after the site is up and running, uh, where we'll be collecting actual traffic data once the tenant is identified and moves into the site, we'll be monitoring traffic for several years um, and DOT will want to see those real numbers, actual numbers from, from a real tenant compared to our estimates in the traffic study to make sure everything lines up and if anything needs to be tweaked or adjusted that, that there is a mechanism in place after the project is built and occupied uh, to, to address any follow-up concerns or anything that might come up later on. So with that, I'll, I'll turn it back to Todd and uh, I'd be glad to answer any specific questions on what you heard today. Yep, thanks Finod. That was, that was really good, uh, nice summary for us. Uh, we mentioned a few times uh, communication with the town of Northbridge and I just wanted to call that out for a second. They're not a a permit granting authority in particular on this project, but we have been having some offline meetings with them, members of the staff in order to kind of address, you know, any concerns that they may have. It is a community that's close by and we wanted to, to, do, to do that. And we uh, suggested to them that we would continue to keep them informed and to discuss with them any issues that they, they may have that they want to bring to the table. So Trish, with that, you know, those are the remarks that we had planned for tonight uh, from on a formal basis. So I'm glad to hand it back to you. Obviously, our team's here for questions and answers later on in the process here. Great, Todd. Thank you very much, Todd, Vinod, um, Dan. We appreciate the, the presentation that was really shed a lot of light on the project for me in particular. Um, thank you very much. So uh, at this point, we're going to... Um, we're gonna proceed through the comments, uh, some brief remarks maybe, uh, make the opportunity available for some of the peer consultants and then uh, go to the planning boards for some comments, uh, initial comments from them. I do wanna point out that uh, some of the town departments um, have received, uh, some of the towns have received uh, comments from the individual departments within the towns and have received some uh, comments from some of the peer reviewers as well already. Um, and those will be shared at a future meeting. So uh, stay tuned for that. Um, at this point, I'm going to uh, just kind of uh, uh, acknowledge Jeff Walsh from Graves Engineering, see if he wants to uh, say a few words about what, what their particular uh, 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 instructions have been and uh, allow him to say a few words. So, Jeff, are you still with us? Yes, I am. Thank you, Trish. Um, again, my name is Jeff Walsh. I'm a registered professional civil engineer with Graves Engineering Incorporated. We're located in Worcester, Mass., 
the focus of our company efforts are in site development, stormwater, wastewater, and some water, water supply. Um, we have a mix of private clients on private development jobs, municipal clients, such as the uh, municipalities here we're working for here, where we provide municipal consulting uh, to various boards and DPWs and so forth. Uh, we work for a state agency on public housing type projects. And we work with a mix of architects from time to time on both private and public jobs. So we've got a nice, a nice background and a nice mix of, of uh, experience amongst our staff. Um, the scope of my review will be um, for the three towns. Uh, we'll be reviewing um, compliance with the zoning bylaws. Um, I focus on it on pertain, how it pertains to engineering issues, but nevertheless, um, I, I take a broad brush at it. I try to stay away from the administrative aspects, but look at the technical aspects as well and the engineering aspects of compliance with the local bylaws. Uh, we'll look at general civil engineering of the site, and that includes the layout, rating, and the drainage design, the collection system, if you will, of the stormwater. Um, and then we'll review for stormwater management, the stormwater management design, compliance with the mass DEP stormwater standards. Uh, and that includes review of the hydrology modeling of both the pre and post development conditions and, and um, um, again, compliance with the, the mass DEP stormwater standards. Um, we work closely with Ecotech um, quite often, and I, I know they are involved with the, um, with the uh, wetlands and they'll be helping the conservation commissions. I've already received the copy of their preliminary letter that they issued where they identified the wetlands. And I'm using that as a basis of reviewing the analysis points used in the hydrology modeling. Um, that's it in a nutshell for now. I, I, I would ask that if, the, if through this process, especially earlier in the process, if there are engineering related issues known to any of the towns, any of the board members, any of the town staff members, um, if those could be communicated to me, that would be appreciated so that I could um, look into them deeper, you know, with a little luck with our, before our first review letter gets, gets issued. But nevertheless, if it comes up later on, that's fine. I'd like to like to look at it because, you know, when, when I do a review like this, I, I, there's three towns, I have to look at three sets of criteria, but I also need to look at the project as a whole and, and see how that works with the area and, um, and so forth. So uh, Trish, again, thank you for allowing me to make an introduction and I look forward to working with everybody on this project. Sure. Thanks, Jeff. I appreciate the, the comments. Uh, at this point, we're going to turn it over to Rebecca ba Brown from uh, GPI to just say a few words about the scope of their, their peer review on the project. All right. Thank you, Trish. Uh, yes, my name is Rebecca Brown. I'm a senior project manager with Greenman Peterson. Our office is located in Wilmington, Massachusetts, and we are a full service um, civil and transportation engineering firm. Um, our, our role in this project is really to review the traffic impacts associated with the project, um, review the site circulation um, as well and the site plan, looking at um, how vehicles will flow throughout the site and ensure that there's no issues there that might cause backups that would extend back on to uh, Lackey Dam Road. Um, as part of this review, um, we will be taking, a, we will be conducting field visits to uh, review the site distances at the, the site driveway locations to examine anything that may impact um, safety of the intersections as well. We'll take a look at um, sight lines through the other study area intersections as well to make sure that there are no issues at any of those locations. Uh, we'll be reviewing the methodology that was included in the traffic impact study, um, as well as all of the inputs that were used to make sure that the inputs that were utilized are appropriate um, and consistent with MassDOT and local guidelines um, for the methodology to complete a traffic impact study. We will be reviewing the traffic volume projections 
as well as the results of all of their uh, delay and queuing analysis that will be conducted as part of the study, and then identifying um, potential mitigation measures to offset any project impacts. Um, we will also be reviewing, um, as Vinod mentioned in his presentation, the scope of the post-occupancy monitoring study to make sure that it does um, appropriately identify the intersections that should be looked at and the items that should be studied as part of that post-occupancy monitoring study as well. Um, and then as we see any other recommendations for additional data that might be needed, um, for example, additional study area intersections or additional mitigation, um, we will make those recommendations as well. Um, we did just send in our first letter um, earlier today that was really a preliminary review of the traffic study, looking at um, the scope of the study and identifying some backup information that may be needed um, just to kind of explain some of the, the inputs and the methodology behind the study. Um, but we will, we will be presenting our, our full analysis at our next meeting um, once VHB has had a chance to present their traffic analysis as well. Great, thanks Rebecca, I appreciate that. Um, at this point, we're gonna, we're gonna go through the, the planning boards, allow them a, a few minutes to kind of give a, some initial reaction to the, to the presentation. We'll start um, over in the Douglas Select uh, uh, Planning Board room and um, we'll let uh, Ernie Marks kind of uh, uh, spearhead this, let us lead us through the, some initial comments there from Douglas. Thank you. Uh, at this time, I don't have any questions myself. I'm gonna ask the members of the board if they have anything they want us to act on now. And first I'd like to know, is Bill Cundiff, the Art Engineer, still online? Bill, are you still on the on the line? Yes, I am. Uh, any, any questions or concerns right now, Bill, that you'd like to bring up? Uh, no, just a couple of thoughts. I want to make sure of a couple of things for Rebecca and Venu to consider. Um, I want to make sure that we also consider the construction period traffic uh, to make sure that there's no impacts during construction. Um, I want to make sure that level of service on the roadways, particularly on North Street and Route 16 in Douglas are considered and that, um, you know, at a minimum, they identify if there's any problems for accessing roadways through Douglas. Okay, thank you, Bill. Anybody on our board have any questions right now? Yeah, Mike Zwicker. Uh, two things. On the site plan there, I see nothing for snow. Where's it all gonna go? You got 12 to 24 inches of snow and a lot of that size. You're gonna have a storage area, a dump area, a push area. Uh, the other thing that's gonna be a big concern is all the traffic from 395 to this site. Going down 16, crossing the bridge, coming on Gilboa and going over to the site. There's no signage for 395 or anything like that. So if a vehicle or truck leaves that site, they could end up in Manchog and drive right on through and never even know it. Um, and that could become a big concern because now you're gonna have tractor trailers lost throughout the town of Douglas <clears throat> trying to get on to 16. And for right now, that's a little start. There'll be more. Thank you, Michael. Um, anything else from Douglas, Tracy, Michael, Greco, Jacob, Aaron, Leslie? Yep. So, Les Stevens here. Uh, just a question about the, the Tennessee pipeline. Uh, is, is it active? And if so, is there any plans for them to tie into it to service the building? We'll take that question and let them respond to that uh, probably in a future meeting, unless uh, somebody uh, has a quick, short answer on that one. Thank you. If Thank you, they Les. don't have an answer, I can say that that is a transmission pipeline. It's not a service pipeline. So the cost for them to have a step down from the high pressure gas line would probably not make it feasible, I'm guessing. Thanks, Bill. Um, all right. Um, anything else from the Douglas Planning Board? 
I just want to make one uh, statement for now. I uh, just want to make sure going forward that there is a clear plan on who would be responding primarily to an emergency situation to the site, which would start during construction process um, and going forward, whether it be a fire, a crime, or a medical emergency, that there's a, a, a process in place on who would respond primarily. Good question. Jen? Um, Jen, can I, I'm sorry, Jen, <laughs> that would be me. Um, Trish, um, can you just, uh, I need the name of the person who was just speaking. Jacob Schultz. Jacob Schultzberg. Jacob? <laughs> Thank and, you. And Jacob, um, the fire chiefs in all three towns, as well as the fire chief in Northbridge have been having meetings already because like you, they feel that is a significant concern that there needs to be a plan well in advance for emergency response of all types, ambulance, fire, police. Um, the police chiefs likewise are also powwowing in advance, so. Thank you, Jen. Yeah, I, just, just one, Aaron Socrat here, and the engineers will figure this out and I'm sure with these retention basins, They've got this considered, but with a 646,000 square foot roof, right? Because that is the coverage. And a one inch rain in a matter of an hour or two, you know, that's all going to have to be worked out through the storm drains. And my concern significant flooding, you know, significant flooding. I'm sure the engineers will address that. But that is a, a tremendous non porous surface that needs to be drained away from the building and not just the building, but the, the lots all have to be figured in. You know that, that's it, thank you. Okay. Great, thank you. But that's all we have. Thank you, Douglas Planning Board. Um, we'll move on now to the to Sutton Planning Board. Uh, Wally Baker, with the help of Jen, um, do you guys have uh, initial comments on the, the project? Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the presenters tonight and uh, you know, it's been quite informative and we look forward to uh, drilling down into the details over upcoming meetings. And I wanna thank Trish, you and your staff for conducting this, which makes it to me, in my mind, one of the, the best ways of doing this rather than having all a series of separate meetings and lack of communication issues cropping up. So what we'll do is we'll go down through the board and, and my members and ask, you know, what their comments are. Bob, largest. I'm, uh, I guess it's the whole enchilada. I'll need to swallow this whole thing. But <laughs> happy to be uh, li home and listening. No comments right now. It's a big okay. one. Mike Gagan. Uh, yeah, no, I also want to just thank everybody for the presentation. Um, this is my first time working with multi-towns and I look forward to it. Um, Obviously, the details will be important in the subsequent meetings. Um, obviously, I think for all the towns, the traffic is always a concern and everything we that knew was coming into town, it will be, you know, a key piece for all of us to hear. So look forward to continuing hearing about it all. Thank you all. Kyle. No comment at this time, Wally. Okay. Bill. No comment at this time, Wally. Okay. Um, I also need a special thanks for our town planner, Jen. She's, she's been coordinating a lot of this act behind the scenes activities, which leads to tonight's event. Jen, what comments do you have on this? Again, uh, just from an initial perspective, traffic is by far the most significant issue. Um, <clears throat> we have a, a very focused initial study area, but like Bill Cundiff in uh, Douglas, We'll be looking in Sutton in terms of impacts on um, roadways like Central Turnpike, which could, which could, could potentially take traffic, um, leaving the site and trying to cut over to 395. So uh, we really want to make sure we're taking a, a, a broader view um, and not just focusing on those obvious intersections close to the site. Um, but the ones uh, that are likely to have some impact at a greater distance. The other thing we always pay very close attention to here 
in the town of Sutton, and, and, and we know our counterparts do as well along the corridor, is um, view shed analysis. What will not only the abutters directly across the street and in close proximity see and have for a visual impact and an audible impact from the project, but also what are travelers up and down the Route 146 corridor getting in terms of this building's kind of uh, visual impact to the valley. We, we really like to focus on any buildings that are built along the corridor to present a positive and a professional face um, for our communities um, to anybody visiting this area. So architecture, sound, lighting, view shed, traffic, those are all things uh, that we will be looking at in our review. Great, thanks, Jen. Uh, anything else, Wally, from Sutton? Um, no, thank, no, thank you, Trish. Thank you, um, Sutton. So uh, Uxbridge Planning Board, Barry, um, would you like to, working with Michael, uh, facilitate some comments from the Uxbridge Planning Board? Yeah, first I'd like to thank uh, all of you guys for uh, doing a great presentation and, and helping out getting this uh, organized. Um, kind of like to do the same thing that Wally did is kind of go through my board, each member, see if they have anything, uh, any comments. Uh, so with that said, Jim, uh, you got any comments? As far as I'm concerned, I mean, the property was an old gravel pit. It's kind of being repurposed into a, a distribution facility. I mean, it's kind of the highest and best use of that property for sitting there where it is, you know? And it's a benefit to all three towns. Okay. Um, Eli, you got anything? Yeah, how you doing, everybody? Thank you again for all that, too. Um, I guess one of my big concerns is uh, lighting, for sure, neighbors. Um, I know we got some things going on, and you see a lot of light pollution. We are in an area that I can't stress enough about light pollution. It's kind of bad. And then um, you're talking about water distribution to uh, through the towns. Uh, our side of Lackey Dam Road is newly paved. And if we're gonna pull water through Whitensville Water Company, I'd like to make sure that we continue with a nice new paved road versus if you drive down Lackey Dam Road now, they're doing some, looks like gas line and the company doing the gas line, they're just patching it. And what's gonna happen in two, three years, we're gonna have potholes and the roads destroyed. So that's one of my big concerns that other than that, everything else looks pretty good. Thank you. Uh, Joe Leonardo. Nice presentation, everyone. Uh, a lot of questions, uh, my concerns have been addressed by the others or raised anyway, so that they'll be coming up. And I'm looking forward to uh, seeing this to completion. Thank you. Thank you. Barry? Just one pen to paper question. Do I understand correctly all of the program documentations will be funneled through the uh, Douglas homepage? Did I hear that correctly? No, I think uh, the documentation is coming. Uh, all of the documents that from the developers are, are being housed in a Google Drive document uh, folder, and then each of the towns on their website has access is posting the uh, proper notice. Um, we're we are actually creating a a shared email that will funnel all of the comments that are received. Uh, I think we've created it's called Three Town Planning Board at cmrpc.org. So anything that you send to that will go, go both to Jen, Bill, and Mike, and will be um, uh, documented as part of a comment or question on the project. Thank you. I'm, I'm good. Thank you. Thank Trish. you. All right. And, and then for myself, um, a couple of things, just because we've been through this in Oxford a few times with uh, some of these big warehouses. Uh, from the guard shack to the end of the street, I'd like to know how many uh, tractor trailers can we stack for up to the guard shack uh, so we don't have, you know, and is that, I couldn't remember, you know, I remember seeing the plan here briefly, but uh, if that was a double lane that you guys had or was there an overflow lane, you know, in the event that we do have extra uh, trucks coming in just to keep them off of Lackey Dam. Um, you know, I guess and that falls under the same aspect with, with the traffic side of things um, and how, you know, the trucks, what their, their routes are going to be. Um, 
the, it was mentioned that this there is no particular user for this site. This is uh, from what I understood from the beginning. Um, so I guess based on that, you know, I, I don't know how you do your traffic analysis based on not actually having a particular user. I guess maybe worst case scenario, it's kind of what you go with. Um, and just kind of some of the other items that, uh, you know, I heard brought up, the lighting, um, noise, you know, sound barriers, things of that nature, and, uh, you know, how to keep it looking decent on the roadside for the uh, abutting neighbors. And that's pretty much uh, all I have. Great. Uh, Michael Gallerani, any, any comments? Michael, are you still on the, the call? Uh, here, hearing none. Um, so uh, thank you uh, to each of the planning boards for your for your comments. At this point, Trish, Trish can I interrupt oh, for a minute? Yeah, sure, Bill. Thank you. Um, I wanted to make sure that the applicant and our consultants are sending out their letters and copying each town individually, in addition to having the documents uploaded to the website, so that um, I can be assured that the members get hard copies of the correspondence back and forth. Sure. Um, Trish and Bill, I will make sure to do that when I issue my letter. Uh, again, this is Jeff Walsh from Graves Engineering. Um, I expect my letter to be out late next week or very early the following week. And um, it will be addressed to all three boards and I'll make sure it gets sent to an individual at each of the three boards electronically. And we certainly will be, uh, uh, as we always do, we'll mail a hard copy for your files. So you don't have to print one for your files. Thank you. Thank you. Fantastic, thank you. Um, so at this point, we're gonna uh, move to the public comment. As a reminder, this meeting is being recorded. If you wish to speak, you're asked to go to the participant menu on your Zoom screen. And you'll see um, on the left side of that, it, there's a, a, a little blue hand. You'll uh, click on that and it will raise your hand. When, it, uh, when it's your turn to speak, you'll be recognized. Um, for those of you on mobile devices, if you star nine to raise your hand, it would be really helpful for our facilitators um, if the participants would add their name to the participant tab. Um, and first thing when you're, when after you're recognized, if you will um, please for the record, identify yourself with your first and last name, your street name, your town or any other affiliation. If you forget, I may, we may interrupt to ask you to briefly remind you to do that. Um, again, this is being recorded. Then you may begin your comment or question. Once you're called on, you'll be mm -hmm. a pretty, uh, thank you, a pretty tightly controlled three-minute window. Um, you're gonna, we're gonna be very limited in time today. We're already sitting here at 3:28, so um, this meeting is going till nine o'clock, and we're gonna need about five minutes or so just to kind of close everything out and give you next steps and and do the final roll call on the the vote to continue this hearing. So. A pretty, uh, pretty uh, strictly controlled um, comment period. This day of the hearing is going to end at 9 p.m. If you do not get, if we do not get to you in today's hearing, there will be additional, additional avenues for you to provide comment or question, both in future meetings and by contacting one of the town planners. And we'll put those those names and addresses up on the final screen um, before we, we close out tonight. Um, and again, as I pointed out, we've we've created a, a special uh, email address through CMRPC that will go to all of the, the town planners. Um, so unless time permits, um, we will not be respond responding to any of the specific questions or comments in today's hearing. Again, questions and comments will be logged and the applicant will be provided uh, these written comments uh, We'll, and the applicant will provide written comments, um, responses where appropriate for discussion in subsequent nights of the hearing. Um, please, in your comments, please be respectful. Um, if you become disrespectful, you'll be muted and or removed. Um, remember, respect is very, uh, first and foremost, disorderly or offensive comments or language will not be tolerated. Violators will be given one warning for their disruption and will, will result in you being removed from the hearing. Um, and so with that, um, Carrie's going to help me kind of facilitate the how we move through the, the comments. 
Um, so uh, do we have uh, somebody with their hand up first, Carrie? Um, I do not see any raised hands. Is there calling? anybody who would? Okay. Is that you, Kelly Ryan? Uh, no, Tim Ryan, 20 Oak Chris Road, Sutton. I, I don't okay. see any blue hands, so. <laughs> you can go first. Go ahead. No, no I, I, it looks like a good project. I live right directly behind it. Um, they notified me as 20R, which is my family's properties. Um, my concerns, all the board members kind of addressed lighting or rather illuminate the yard than mine and uh backup alarms at night i get walmarts in the summer and they drive me nuts so um if they can address that i really you know wish them luck i hope we get some jobs and tax dollars you know uh, that's my only my only thing is the noise at night and the illuminating their yard and not the neighbor's yards would be ideal, you know. And I think the traffic's going to be super busy with 110 doors. That seems like twice of what they have in Oxbridge at um, oh, the big uh, warehouse they built over there by Hood. Anyway, um, I think it's a good project, though. I, I, I hope it uh, can come to fruition for everybody so that's all i have to say okay thank you very much jen did you need him to repeat his address for the record nope i've got it 20 ochres okay excellent okay is there anybody else wishing to make a public comment We'll give folks a few minutes to think about this. There's a lot to di digest in one hearing. So we've got, we've got a little bit more time. If people are having trouble raising their hand or figuring out how to do that, you can certainly feel free to unmute and and just, you know, give us an excuse me and, and we'll we certainly will um We'll try to bring you into the conversation that way. Thank you, Jen. Well, as, I, as I've pointed out, this won't be our last time to discuss this project. Um, we've uh, scheduled at least two more uh, 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 he meetings uh, to continue this hearing, uh, more topically based. Uh, I believe the next one is probably focused on traffic and the other one on uh, additional uh, topics. Um, um, Trish, we do have... Uh, Trish, we do have... Yeah. <laughs> like Peter. Peter yes, D, I'm going to yep. ask. Oh, I see. Perfect. Peter, yes. How you doing? Peter Demers. Address is 4 Walk and Tuck Drive in Uxbridge. Walk and Tuck. Yes. W -E U D A N T U C K. Thank you. Yeah, so I just want to say that I, I, I don't live anywhere near the project, so I'm not in a butter. Um, learn an awful lot today about the project so i thank everybody for that and i guess i'm just curious because we don't have a lot of people raising their hand at this point in the project have all the uh abutters if you will been notified of the project or is, does that come at a later date um trish do you want me to take that one I believe we have the, the the luxury of a little bit of time. Maybe each of the the town's representatives could could answer that question. I don't think that one's out of uh, requires a whole lot of thought. You have either notified the abutters or you have not. Actually, Sutton was in charge of notifying all the abutters in all the communities, and I can tell you that was done. So we um, compiled, worked with the applicant, worked with the assessors departments in all the communities, including. Um, double checking with the town of Northbridge to make sure there was nobody in Northbridge, which there wasn't at, at the distance we're at with this site. And all of those abutters were notified. 
Thank you. Uh, do you have further comment, Peter? Uh, no, thank you. Thank you. Um, again, so uh, we look, there are uh, further opportunities for comments. I know, like I said, there's a lot to digest here. Uh, comments and questions, you know, you're, I'll put a screen up at the end of this that shows uh, Jen's, uh, Bill's, and Michael's email, and then that th uh, new email address that we all be setting up that will send something to everybody on the uh, each of the three of them. Um, so with that, uh, well, this is Bob Largest from the Sutton Planning Board. Hi, Bob. Um, Do you have a comment? I'm, no, I, I just think. Uh, I'm happy that uh, in an hour and a half, uh, people in the Blackstone Valley were given a, a pretty good plate of stuff to digest. And I'm happy that people aren't shooting from the hip. It's, uh, I don't mind if we end a little bit early this time so all of us can digest this and, uh, and think and look forward to the next meeting on Thursday. Um, this is a lot to ask uh, for anyone to take it one night so uh, I'm on board it's a big one for sure I time to think for sure um so the next public meetings again will so focus on the specific topic areas that were highlighted this evening we anticipate that those meetings will be held on February 25th two weeks from tonight and two weeks later on March 11th also via zoom so practice those zoom skills folks um, additional meetings may be added if we deem them necessary Please watch the town's websites for posted public hearing meeting notices. Um, thank you all for attending this evening. If you have further comment, again, please contact uh, Bill, Jen, and Mike or 3TownPB hearing at cmrpc.org, which will be directed to all three of them. I'm going to now, inter I need to now entertain a motion and a second from each of the boards to continue this hearing to the future meetings. This is not debatable. I will do a roll call vote once the motions have been made. First from the town of Douglas, please state your name and a vote. Ready, Mox? Aye. Oh, we we need, need a motion and a second first. Oh, a motion to continue? Yes, please. All right, I'm, I just want to make that motion, please. Go ahead. Make a motion to continue the public hearing to the Blackstone Logistics Center. Second. Eric, who, second. Who, who made the motion? I'm sorry. Mike's motion, motion was made by Eric, Mike Sewicker and seconded by Eric Sokrat. Thank um, you. Um, time and date certain, please. February 25th, 7 p.m. So moved. Thank you. Uh, let me run up to my list here. Um, uh, real quick roll call, Ernie Marks. Aye. Tracy Sharkey. Aye. Michael Greco. Aye. Jacob Schultzberg. Aye. Aaron Socrat. Aye. Leslie Stevens. Aye. Michael Zwicker. Aye. The motion carries in Douglas. Same in Sutton. Uh, we need a motion and a second. Uh, Kyle Bergson, I make a motion to continue this hearing to February 25th at 7 p.m.? Yes. Thank you. And is there Mike, a second? Uh, Michael Gagan, uh, I'll second the motion. Thank you. A quick roll call. Walter Baker? Aye. Michael Gagan? Aye. Robert Largess? Aye. Scott Polo, I don't believe, is on the call. I am. Aye. Oh, thank you, Scott. Um, Kyle Bergeson? Aye. And Bill Talcott? Aye. The motion carries in Sutton, thank you. And same in Uxbridge, a motion and a second to continue the meeting to March 25th at 7 p.m. I would like to make a motion to continue the public hearing to February 25th of Blackstone Logic Center. And that's Eli Lavadier. Eli Lavadier, sorry. And a second? Mm -hmm. I'll second it. And who is that? Jim Smith. Jim Smith, thank you. Uh, and a quick roll call, Barry? Aye. James? James Smith? Aye. Uh, Barry Hawk? 
Aye. Eli Levadier. Aye. Joe Leonardo. Aye. And the motion carries in the Uxbridge Planning Board. Thank you all for attending tonight. Um, we really appreciate the, the time of the development team, everybody who's presenting the uh, on behalf of the applicant, our peer reviewers, uh, the planning boards for each of the three towns. Um, we really appreciate the time and thank you for inviting CMRPC to, to be a part of this very exciting project. Um, we will see you all in on February 27th at 7 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Trish. Thank you.